siguro um, hayaan ko na itong video na to na magpaliwanag sa inyo or magpakita sa inyo who's our guest for today. So uh, watch this one guys. Ayan na nga, ang ating kasama for today's episode, uh, the King Eagle himself, uh, the number 11 for Ateneo uh, de Manila University uh, men's football team, Harvey Gayo. So Harvey, uh, how are you this afternoon? Hello po, I'm okay. Um, yun nga, bato pa rin sa bahay but trying to make things work out. So I'm um, doing what I can to be productive pa rin po. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for today and uh, actually uh, feeling ko ito na yung uh, pinakaihintay nilang uh, episode since um, you know uh, since the uh, foundation of um, the Ascals development team I'm pretty sure people are really wanting to see uh, players like Harvey Gayosa and other uh, college uh, standouts na makasama natin sa ating show so um uh, first uh, thing lang na gusto nating malaman is um Uh, you've announced uh, that you are not going to be playing for Ateneo uh, like for uh, season 82 na na, na cancel then because of the COVID-19 pandemic. How tough was that decision to uh, skip your last year for Ateneo and uh, join uh, the Ascals development team? Um I think it was it was probably one of the toughest decisions I had to make um um in my football career. So in fact it wasn't really an option for me. It was it was more of Um, I was keeping my doors open to to receive opportunities to to leave um, the men's football team, but um, I was very much set to being um, to coming back for season 82 for my for my final year in the um, UAAB. So um, I, I I weighed all the um, possible um, opportunities that I had, and um, this one was was the one that actually set me towards. Um, choosing to to leave my final year um last season 82 so um it was difficult because um for almost half the year we were already um practicing together we were already preparing ourselves for season 82 we were already preparing to defend the crown um it was difficult in such a way that um i've given so much i've sacrificed so much for the team and also my teammates have sacrificed a lot and we've all already adjusted to um each other's game into the playing style we wanted to play um for season 82 and it, just letting it all go um it felt um it felt hard for me it, it, I, i felt parang nasasayangan ako sa effort na linagay namin lahat na for, for me to leave but then at the same time um i had to think about um the next step that i wanted to make and i had to think about what i wanted to do in the future so um My teammates were very supportive, and they also knew exactly um, how I felt. They 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 were all in the same mindset as me, um, and they all approved of what I wanted to do. So it it that's what made it easier that my teammates were all there to support me despite um, having to leave um, for season 82. Yeah, thank you so much for that answer. Actually, Harvey, uh, there were people who, who approached me uh, when when I told them that we're gonna be having this episode with you, um, and also when they when they knew that uh, you're not gonna be committing your last year for Ateneo and uh, you'll be joining the Ascals development team, they were asking, um, parang it's it's kind of late 
uh, to see Harvey to play in the professional league in the in the in the Philippines. However, um, it's somehow the perfect time as well. Siguro na masasabi natin na you uh, have decided to skip your last year and uh, be with uh, the ADT since um, I think uh, this is the first time actually that we had this kind of program and this is the first time as well that they'll uh, be joining the Philippines Football League and. Um, and yeah, with all the um, performances that you've had in your illustrious career with Ateneo, I think it's it's just the perfect timing for you and uh, the ADT. Yes, um, I actually agree with that. Um, the opportunity that Coach, Coach Scott um, and Sir Dan Palami have um, um, given to us was was actually the best way that I saw myself. Because I knew I know that um, a lot of players, especially in foreign countries. Um, either skip college or they get into the pros very much um, at an early age. And um, I saw that. I saw the disparity when I competed in international football games. So um, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm familiar with the whole environment and the whole um, truth that I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm way below or um, everybody is way ahead, especially in my age. A lot of people um, in my age are already experienced playing in the pros. So I, I know that already, and um, this team that I joined was not actually—it's not actually um, focused on winning any championship, but developing um, athletes, especially college athletes. So it's very much focused on the situation that I have now. Um, that's why I found it as the best opportunity because um, they were all there willing to help me receive a pro um, contract either here or abroad um, by de- by focusing on my development rather than just focusing on winning a championship um, for. For the club, and uh, thank you. So I, I think before I head into the other questions that I have for you, um, Arvi, let's just have uh, my colleague as well uh, to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, let's uh, start off with with Glenn. I, I think you had uh, a couple of uh, questions that you uh, that you have for the King Eagle himself. So uh, just go ahead, but I'm gonna answer. <laughs> Thank you sa chance na pagtatanong ko nito sa iyo. Pero yeah, uh, thank you. Kasi I was really curious then. So coming from grassroots, of course, playing from a very young age all the way to uh, your current years right now. So I just wanted to know how much was the PFF, the Philippine Football Federation? How much were they involved in the progress of your growth as a grassroots player all the way to your professional career? And May ginagawa ba silang tama? Are they things that they could have done better? Okay. Um, so, my first experience um, um, feeling the whole program of the PFF would be when I first joined the national team, which was um, under 19. So, medyo late na po ako nag-start. So, un- under 19 na po ako nag-start ng um, um, training under the PFF mismo. Before that, I was training under uh, local so, uh, um, football fanatics and school clubs also. So um, I think one positive thing that um, one positive thing that the PFF has done, especially for the youth football, is that um, we're very participative, especially when it comes to ASEAN tournaments. So um, there are, there are going to be a lot of um, criticism um, about um, lack of training and all that. But um, one thing for sure is that we will, um, in order to avoid a certain penalty, the Philippines will represent. And um, I think being in, being um, active in representing the country um, shows at least there's a certain effort for the youth to be to 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 receive that kind of exposure. Um, so that's one thing. That's 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 my biggest. Um, that's the biggest um, influence that I've received from from um, the PFF so far. Thanks for that. Uh, well, since Thank Yaya, you. you've been uh, training with them. Just to follow up, long then. Yeah, so how different is the experience when you were just being trained by the clubs versus now you're training for regionals, you're training for uh, for international football? Uh, okay, so um, when it comes to the players, definitely because uh, when you're playing for the national team or when when you're playing for um, for a certain represent, um, if you're representing a certain, for example, region or 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 if you're certain if you're representing the country, you're definitely going against players who. Um, who are either better than you or who are as good, even. Um, so um, the difference is that 
you you become more competitive, especially when it comes to your spots, because you're no longer just training with your friends, especially when it comes to club football. You're no longer training with friends, or you're no longer limited to um, just a certain number of people around um, the certain club. Um, so if it's a Manila-based club, then you have Manila-based players. But when it comes to playing for the national team, especially when it comes to the program um, held by the PFF, like having tryouts from Luzon Visayas and Mindanao, and then they come together um, for the training, uh, you get to experience playing with um, a lot of different people who come from a lot of different cultures and then um, all band together fighting for the spot, um, especially when it comes to being in the starting 11. Thank you for that. Uh, I still have Thank some you. questions, but uh, do you guys want to um, ask him first now? Yeah, okay. Um, with regard to um, the other questions that the, the team has, uh, Sir Aaron Bayato of Radio Pilipinas does has, uh, just have a couple of questions, uh, siguro related with the UAAP as well. Um, go ahead, Sir Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Tito J, uh, Sir Glenn, and Sir David. Uh, hi, Harvey. Uh, before Hello. anything else, uh, as always, na binabati namin yung aming mga national athletes. Uh, thank you very much for representing our country. Dahil na sa Sea Games, uh, in spite of all the stuff that happened before the Sea Games, ano, <laughs> but uh, nakapag-focus kayo and uh, you were able to bring a victory for us. Sayang, we were almost uh, one step uh, sa semis, pero job well done, Sir Harvey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Apo. All right, sir. Now, sir, of course, uh, you played uh, for uh, Ateneo Blue Eagles during your career sa UAAP. How was it playing for Coach uh, JP Marita? Na pwede niyo pong i-discuss sa ating mga listeners and viewers. Okay, so, um, so um, aside from my college career, he was also the one who uh, coached the men's junior, uh, the juniors football team sa Ateneo. So, um, I, I played with him for almost eight to ten years. Probably eight years. I think eight years. Yeah, I played with him for eight years, and um, um, he's just like a father to me. You know, he's 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 guided me throughout everything, and he's never been uh, he's never sugarcoated anything. If he sees that I'm I'm off um, during a game, or if he sees that I'm doing something wrong, he'll always point it out. So he's a very very formative coach. He's a um, he doesn't hide anything. He will never sugarcoat anything with you, and. Um, he he is the 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 magical tactician tacticianer sorry uh, he's 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 one 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 um inspiring um tacticianer that um when he has the right players um he can make um wonders with 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 it and um i believe in that uh, it's happened time and time again um we've done it um for two seasons um being champions and then we've done it um in high school a lot of times we've competed against the best teams and um prevailed um but what the big the biggest the biggest effect that Coach JP has on me is that um, he's been like a father that that um, uh, he's been like my father um, in Manila. It, it, he's he's guided me through um, on and off field problems, and um, he's always there, especially when it comes to uh, like when 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 we're off the field. But they can magkulitan. We can talk to each other normally, or we we play ML together. But when it comes to the field focus, everybody's focused, and he's focused, and um, he's just he's just hungry to win. So um, he, he's he's a more approachable coach that um, that um, as long as you're willing to learn and as long as you're open to a lot of his uh, insights about your game, it's easy for him to to mold you into the best athlete that you can be. Mm -hmm. And the uh, best athlete he did uh, mold you. I can see Coach uh, JP. You know, <laughs> your final question before going back to Tito J, Sir Glenn, and Sir David. Uh, at ano yung lasal rivalry usually nag nag sikat siya patok siya pag sa basketball or sa volleyball yeah. but it made uh, head headlines sa uh, football pitch sa Rizal Football Stadium on which uh, you defeated your arch rival sa sport kasi usually nasanay kami or nasanay yung karamihan ng football collegiate football fans sa ano yung UP because uh, both schools have outstanding football programs. At Ateneo Lasal in the finals and beating them, how special it was uh, for you personally? Um, personally, it was it was very special. I think um, in an inside in a, in a smaller circle, in an inside circle, um, it was like battle of um, family members. So kantawan yon la na family namin. Kasi kalahati kalahati Ateneo Lasal, so kantawan yon. But then um, at the end of the day, of course, um, I love them and we're all family. But um, it meant a lot to me because um, it made it so much sweeter that in the finals we did what we did against La Salle. Um, it couldn't have been a better written story for me. And um, 
just the whole idea that it was an Ateneo La Salle game because I think um, an Ateneo La Salle game will always um, bring in the biggest crowds. It will always... That, that, that's, what, that's actually what we were saying, me and my teammates, um, closely after the finals. Um, I don't think it would have made the big, that big of an impact if it wasn't an Ateneo La Salle game. I think, I think just because it was an Ateneo La Salle game that um, it made such a big impact um, it trended on Twitter and a lot of people were, were able to watch it and all that. Um, just the whole idea, <laughs> yun lang, yun lang talaga, the whole idea that it was an Ateneo La Salle game just made it so much sweeter. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tsaka, siyempre, always happy na blue prevailing over green. Of course, <laughs> any day. <laughs> any day. Sir Harvey again. <laughs> Sir Harvey, again, uh, thank you very much and uh, we're excited na makapanood ka namin sa ASOS Development Team at sa magiging uh, future much. endeavors mo. And uh, we wish you, you uh, all the best and uh, hope sana, ano, personally, as a fan, hindi ka magsawa na magrepresent sa at sa ating uh, bansa and we salute of you as well as the, sa power national athletes. Kabuhay ka, boss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much, sir. Aaron. We're not gonna hold you for that long, Aaron. Alam ko na meron ka pang um, show ngayon sa radyo. Takas na ako. Takas ka na, sir. Maraming maraming salamat. Now, uh, from one Atenean to another, let's uh, head over to uh, David. Um, David, ikaw. Uh, siguro as someone uh, from the Ateneo family, anong, anong mga katanong mo sa kapwa mo Atenista? Um, actually, Sir Aaron, ano eh, uh, kind of robbed my question towards <laughs> Derby, eh, uh, with regards to, but, uh, like in the UAB, obviously not considering the playoffs and all, do you consider La Salle like a sort of Derby? Like it's the team, like you wouldn't, uh, I don't care how your performance are, if we face La Salle, like it, it's either a W or a W. Do you guys yeah. feel that? Like how do you, how do you feel? a pre-game or days before a La Salle match? Um, there's, there's always been a saying going around, um, especially for Athenians, na matalo na sa lahat, wag lang sa La Salle. So that's what, we, that's what we put into when it comes to the an Athenian La Salle game. And we know no matter, no matter who's um, in the lineup, um, if one team is stronger than the other, it wouldn't matter. An Athenian La Salle game will always be an equal game. Players who are put on the pitch, if it's an Ateneo La game, will want it as much as the other guy. So, lalaban yun kahit sino. Um, we've experienced, especially my first year of college, um, we were against um, we were against a La Salle, team, a La Salle lineup that um, previously um, came from the um, finals. So, their, their team before that year came from the finals. Um, and then they were such a strong team that they beat us in the first round, and then the second round we beat them, so it was a draw. And then we went against them in the semifinal, so it was. It's an Ateneo La Salle game is pretty much um, um, a game of who, whoever wants it more. The winner will always it will always just come from whoever wants it more. So it doesn't really matter who is in the lineup when it when it comes to an Ateneo La Salle game. Patayan yun hanggang kung sino man matera. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it's kind of good to see that kind of competition, especially in the you know we're always used to the. Uh, basketball side but it's nice to see you know the rivalry on the football yeah. side especially on the football side because there's more tension and more drama <laughs> in my opinion Definitely. yeah and second question uh, i'll follow up to that uh so again uh i'm happy to see you part of the astas development team uh we Thank see you. a bright future ahead of you but uh, aside from that, you know, uh, you've been nominated, you've been awarded three times uh, Best Striker Awardee, and now you're part of the ADP. Do you feel pressure? If yes, how do you handle it? Because all, all I, a lot of eyes are on you now, Jordi. And, you know, uh, also, uh, is there are times that fans expect a lot from you because obviously you're representing our country mm-hmm. and you know at times it's kind of a difficult maybe sometimes a psychological situation to, to handle uh, like you personally uh, how do you feel uh, and how would you handle it okay um, so the pressure that I feel now isn't really about me doing well um, it's not really me about um, fulfilling expectations, especially when it comes to the fans. The pressure that I have right now is more on 
um, the pressure that I have on myself and the pressure that the team is putting on me in terms of this is good pressure by the way in terms of me being able to perform at my um, my, my best uh, at, to be at my peak when it comes to being um, uh, playing in games or in training so um, the pressure comes from me experiencing and learning this new role that I have in the team because like what you said um, I did win um, awards especially when it comes to scoring um, but this is, is a whole different football uh, football game for me now especially that I've turned into pro and I've been uh, molded and I'm being molded into this um, other position so I think the pressure comes from me being able to fulfill my duties um, in the pitch on the pitch um, being a wing back rather than a striker so that's the pressure that that, that I have uh, when it comes to the expectations of the fans and of um, of everybody watching um, I've dealt with it before especially in the UAAP when 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 before coming into college um, there there has been pressure and when it comes to um, playing for the country of course you can't you can't have fans expect you guys not to win so um, that will always be there as well um, but when it comes to when it comes to how much it affects me um, I, I look at myself I look at my journey in a more personal um, perspective so I don't really take in as much of the pressure um, if I if I if I falter then I understand um, but it's it's also an opportunity for me to be able to um, work on my game so if I do if I do bad then um, I just keep my head up and continue working harder. Uh, but if I if I if I fulfill their expectations, then I'm pretty sure there's going to be another expectation for them um, to be set upon um, my game and my journey as a football player. So it will just keep going. Um, it's either um, I bring myself up, I bring I bring myself up, or I let it um, eat me inside. So I, I'd rather, um, especially in terms of my mindset at the moment, I'm very very much I'm very much hungry um, to prove myself. I'm very much hungry to make a statement the moment I come back. Um, and play for the PFL, so um, I wouldn't let it bother me as much, especially now. Ooh, that gave me goosebumps. That answer gave me goosebumps. <laughs> 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 Grabe, no? Yeah. Tipong, tipong yung sagot ng tao na wag nyong intindihin kung ano yung performance ko in the UAAP. Wag nyong isipin kung ano yung ginawa ko with Ateneo. Tignan nyo kung ano yung gagawin ko once we start uh, yeah, the competition. Yeah. And and I think that's yeah. that, that's kind of a great answer as well to those who... Should we say put a lot of pressure uh, in you after those years of playing with Ateneo? Of course, uh, they've seen that. Oh, this is the, the this is a new kid in town. That he's really um, he's really something. He got he got really uh, something to prove uh, for himself. Now, um, speaking of uh, you know proving yourself uh, your self worth with uh, the national team and um, with the ADT actually, um, as of the moment we have. Technically, the the strongest lineup, uh, given the fact that we have players from overseas coming in, we also have players who played here in the Philippines and uh, migrated to other countries because of better opportunities that they got. Um, what can you say about the, um, let's say the uh, your thoughts about the involvement of the uh, foreign players into the squad, or uh, should we say, uh, are there any negative things? With them, uh, with them actually uh, playing with the uh, with with the local born, or it just um, it just increases the the bar uh, higher. Okay, so um, when it comes to the foreign uh, the Phil foreigners that come in for the team, I think it's a great opportunity for especially local talents to be able to experience and to adapt to the way that they play. Um, I think it's a, it's as it's as close as we local footballers can get um, from experiencing international um, football. Um, in a non-competitive manner. So when it comes to training, we get to experience um, their mentality towards the game, the, the way that they play, um, how smart they are, their, their football IQ, and of course, their skills. Um, so we, we get to find leverage in terms of where we are um, as local athletes, especially those who um, are based here and who have grown up playing football here in the Philippines only, exclusively. Um, of course, there are downsides. There, there are downsides also to having um, kill foreign players, like um, uh, the language barrier. Especially if you're getting um, players from from countries that don't speak English that that well, um, there there could be a language barrier there. Especially when they're more fluent speaking in their in their um, language, um, wherever it may be. <clears throat> um, aside from that. Uh, I think it's a positive thing that we have right now going for us that we have a lot of 
players who are willing, who are not who are not just being recruited, but who are willing to come and represent the country. That shows a lot of um, um, desire. That it's it, 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 it's a, it's nice to have that the initiative comes from the player themselves that they want to represent the country because it will translate into the game and the dying minutes of the game when you can see that someone is willing to fight for the country. I think um, that's a beautiful aspect of um, a fail foreign player that they'd want or they'd take the initiative to ask to represent the country. Thank you so much for that very beautiful answer. Because we, we've we've actually uh, had this uh, discussion <laughs> last Sunday about uh, these uh, Phil foreign players. Now they they had their opportunity to play overseas. They they played with their yeah. youth uh, uh, teams overseas. Uh, like for example, Phil and James played with uh, mm-hmm. with England in their younger days before suiting up for the national team. But they still chose to uh, to wear the uh, Philippine flag, and uh, that's something yeah. that. Um, you cannot say that they they wore it just because uh, there were better offer of playing here in the Philippines compared to England. I mean, if you compare the Philippine football to English football, it's it's really day and night. So uh, yeah. th- that's a great thought that you have. So, bago tayo mag-init palalo since we are receiving a lot of. Uh, questions from our fans regarding your career and uh, <laughs> siguro yung, yung trajectory ng career na gusto mo mangyari for you. We're just gonna take a, a short break and uh, once we come back, we'll uh, go to uh, the questions thrown to us by our fans. So, um, uh, yun. so uh, for now, let's just refresh a bit and uh, let's just take a quick break. Alright, welcome back to the show, mga po, mga kickers. Uh, I'm very thankful that we have a lot of viewers as well. Keep those questions coming. It's it's a very interesting topic that we have right now. And uh, again, we still have um, Harvey Gayoso of the Ascals development team. Uh, over the break, we were discussing a lot of things. And um, sobrang, I mean, uh, David here. Uh, from Davao mentioned to us uh, before uh, before you joined in again uh, Harvey uh, he's he's really happy that we have you on the show it sobrang chill mo daw ka usap na parang parang <laughs> all of the pressures were really uh, were really nothing to you or all of the questions na binabato namin say it was just just a normal thing and um, uh, i think it's something na nahubog mo during the years while you were playing with uh, Ateneo and and also with the national team and um now uh, talking about the uh, the national team uh, the recently concluded the 2019 Southeast Asian Games uh, people were actually asking uh, questions about your performance in the SEA Games because um rather than us you know seeing you up front uh, the usual for uh, uh position that you have uh, as a striker um i think 
coach um, Goran, uh, coach uh, Ernie Nieras of uh, the um, the Oscars under 22. What they have planned was to play you from the back, uh, specifically like uh, I think you were playing like left back during that time. Uh, yeah. How how did you adjusted to that uh, position, or was it introduced to you uh, before, uh, like when you started playing football? Uh, was it like your starting position, or uh, was it was it really tough that you were put into uh, a left back position in the Sea Games? Okay, uh, so from the very beginning, palang yung. Um, tryouts pa lang mismo ng SEA Games kasi um, it was, I was having difficulty finding my spot in the first 11. So, from the from from the very beginning pa lang, I was not as confident in my game because I felt like I wasn't trusted enough to be part of the first 11. So, um, when it came to um, truth be told, it was actually my very first time playing competitive football as a left back against Cambodia. That was my very first time to play um, competitive football. I've never I've never played in any tournament, even a seven-side tournament playing left back. It was my very first time to play. And um, I learned the position the day before in our final practice before entering, um, before the, the game mismo against Cambodia. Um, the way that I saw it, it was, was, it was an opportunity for me to play. I felt like um, instead of me sitting down in the bench, and not being able to help out in um, the, the tournament, I'd rather do what I can in whatever position I'd be trusted with. And um, Coach Scott was the one who actually saw the potential in me playing as a wing back. I think it was also a very smart and tactical decision because um, Cambodia had really fast wingers, and I was just there to pacify those those wingers. So it was a tactical decision which played out very well. Um, I never saw it as um, a hindrance for my game. I never saw it as um, me. I never felt na parang masasayang yun laro ko. Um, I always took it um, with my head held high. I took it as a responsibility and an opportunity for me to to modernize my game because football is not just um, one straight line now. Um, and um, I think I'm I'm very proud of the way that I played. I felt that I was able to do as much as I can with given the 24 hours um, preparation that I had. And um, of course, I had my coaches there. Uh, in fact, um, during training on the day, uh, the day before the game, during training, I felt like a playable character to my coach. So my coach was right beside me in the stand, uh, in the outside line while we were practicing um, the tactics. And then he'd tell me where to run and where to stay, how to shift my body, how to, how to move with the, with the back four, how to be disciplined in coming back for defense and how to attack, when to find the right opportunity to attack, where to send the ball if I don't have any um, open teammates. So I felt like I was actually in, um, just playing him. Like he was just, no, he was just playing me. I felt like a character that he chose in the game, alam mo yung parang sa FIFA 19, FIFA ano, yung <laughs> my pro player, kasi isang tao lang yung kinokontrol mo. Mm. Feel ko ako yung kinokontrol lang niya. Ganun lang yung ano. And um, I made sure that I, I took everything in. I made sure that I studied properly. And then I, of course, I looked back at vi- videos of um, a lot of the left uh, left back, like Trent Alexander Arnold, and of course, Daisuke Pisato. Um, so I looked at I looked at a lot of players and I just I was I was studying I was super nervous because it was my first time and I didn't want to let anyone down. So um, the night before the the, the game I was uh, and my roommates noticed that I was actually watching a lot of games, especially of Juventus and all those that play um, the same for, formation that we played. And I was just studying it and I just um, I took it wholeheartedly and I, I made sure that I didn't disappoint anyone. Didn't dis- dis- especially I didn't want to disappoint myself. Because that was my opportunity to be able to play in the starting eleven, and I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't want to lose that opportunity, even if it meant playing at the back, even if it meant me not being comfortable with um, my position. Um, as long as I was able to play and help the country out, and that's 
that's what I wanted to do. Yun yung, yun yung biggest shock siguro for us fans and uh, siguro writers na rin. Wherein we saw you play as well. Uh, I, I think you uh, you also played in the uh, Copa Paulino Alcantara. Wherein uh, yes. the, the U22s had their siguro parang test tournament before the SEA Games. Yes. And uh, during that time, I, I think you were in rotation up front as well. Parang uh, it's, yes. it's, it's really all of a sudden that... Uh, when the starting lineup was announced or when the formation was laid out in the very first uh, game in the Southeast Asian Games. Uh, ako, I myself, uh, I was with the crowd that time. I, I saw you. Oh, bakit nasa left back si Harvey? Bakit? Bakit nandun siya ngayon? Ganun yung feeling namin. But when we saw how um, you played the position or how uh, siguro how it progressed during the game na nakita nga natin na you have exploited that left side of uh, Cambodia and uh, nakita natin na it it kind of worked wonders for uh, for the Philippines during that time. It's just that, siguro, um, andun nga yung, siguro, first game jitters and also the fact that you've learned uh, the possession uh, probably, or virtually 24 hours before the yeah. main tournament itself. But, you know, it's it's a really uh, big step uh, for uh, for you knowing that um, all of the football players that we have right now uh, in your generation actually uh, you cannot stick to one position uh, you have to be yeah. very flexible because one one day you can see yourself as a striker and then the next day you you'll see yourself in the bench so uh, kudos to that uh, great move and uh, we, we do uh, uh, acknowledge the uh, the move as well ng coaches to uh, put you in that position it, it really brought out uh, a different uh, Harvey Gayoso for uh, for us now thank you um siguro ito, ito na lang before before i head over to my my good friend the glenn um a lot of our fans were asking this as well young generation will be the next one to take over of the current generation siguro uh, moving into the new era of the ascals and um siguro based on your experience um how do you see the national team in the next coming years uh, how tough will it be um and siguro how uh how difficult would would it uh, be for you and the rest of your teammates coming into um, the new phase of uh, Philippine football? I think it's very promising. Um, I understand that um, the PFF, especially when it comes to um, the coaching staff of the, the ASCOS, they have very good plans um, waiting for, for a lot of the younger athletes, younger generation of athletes. And um, thanks to the to the to this most previous um, generation that they've laid a beautiful foundation for a lot of um, for a lot of athletes to to be eager and to want to go and represent to come and represent the country. Um, being uh, for for the for the team that just reached um, that brought the Philippines to the Asian Cup, I think that's one big step that enticed a lot of um, younger athletes to come and join um, and play for the country. Um, I've I've been hearing a lot of prospects and a lot of um, recruitment or not well not really recruitment but more of um, a lot of um, initiative from a lot of for till foreign players that want to come um, and represent especially after knowing that we've um, reached the Asian Cup so um, thanks to them I I feel like it's it, we're such a promising um, uh, generation of athletes that um, from here on I think it's gonna be um, a lot better. Uh, we're we're going to be soaring greater heights and we're going to be reaching more goals, especially when it comes to the Suzuki Cup and coming back for the Asian Cup. Yeah, thank you so much, Harvey. Now, we turn over to Glenn, uh, who really has an interesting question coming from uh, Tama ko ilonggo tong kaibigan ko. Uh, go ahead, Glenn. Uh, uh, bato mo na yung tanong na yan. Maganda yan eh. Oh, sige. Well, you know naman, uh, being Ilongos, eh, we always have heroes that we look uh, look for or look towards. So, one of the yeah. local heroes that we've really looked to, uh, looked to in the past was uh, Chiefy Kalignong, which I even had the honor of uh, having a, a quick Facebook chat recently dahil nga sa mga recent developments. So, you were being, uh, you're being quoted as the next Chiefy Kalignong. And... That's re- uh, that's really uh, it, it's really interesting to know how you feel about this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big responsibility. Uh, Kaligdong um, proved to a lot of Filipinos that we can compete internationally as long as we have um, the courage and as long as we have the drive. 
kaya natin lumabang mga Pinoy. Especially when it comes to... Kasi yung, yung pay and time na, na medyo controversial na puro um, halo yung mga nasa team eh. So when he stepped up and when he was the one who was actually scoring the goals for the team, it was a big thing for, for the country. And um, that's always something I, I wish to emulate and I hope um, to emulate one day. And I, I, I continue to, to strive for it. But um, it's a big responsibility knowing that I'm being compared to one of probably the greatest um, recent generation of football athletes um, in the country, especially who are locally grown. Um, but yeah, see, most Chiefy, ever since I was a kid, naman, he's always been looking after me. So um, the pressure is not not that it's not that it's not that big, naman, because um, I always I've always looked up to him, and if I can't emulate that, then um, I understand because he's he's such he's such a really good athlete, he's such a really good footballer. But at the same time, um, it's touching to know that someone I'm very close to, especially because you can't see mama nga, whenever we see each other in the tournament, mom would always greet and then um, Sir Chiefy would always greet mom also. So um, we're, we're kind of close when, when it comes to when it comes to um, our personal relationship. So um, it's, it's, it's touching that I'm, I'm able to, to to be seen as that kind of player. But um, hopefully I, I prove people that I can actually be the next Chiefy. We're yeah. looking forward to it. Grabe. I, I mean, <laughs> thank you very much. By far, this is the Siguro um, with the uh, with the number of strikers, let alone players that graced uh, or wore the national team kit, uh, being compared to Chiefy Kaligdong was kind of. Uh, I, I could drown in that pressure, but hearing uh, yeah. hearing those thoughts from you, I mean, uh, it, it's. It's a situation of there's really nothing to lose. I mean, if 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 yeah. I became the next chief league done, then thank you. If not, then might as well be the the, the Javier or the uh, Harvey yeah. Gayosa. Uh, and and yeah. that's one thing to prove uh, to people that you know uh, sheer hard work can um, can get you where you want to be, uh, especially yeah. here in the Philippines. Since you know, uh, we are we have uh, players from overseas who were exposed to a higher level of uh, football, and uh, now that our level of football here in the Philippines is uh, increasing as well, then it's about time for them to show their uh, their hard work or their passion to the sport. Now, um, let's head over to the question sent in by our fans. We have. Have a lot uh, uh, coming in. First uh, question from uh, Kerson uh, Graza. Um, you're now finally a uh, pro football player. My question is, why only this coming season you decided to go pro? Is it because of your uh, studies, wanting to win more for Ateneo, or other clubs are simply uh, simply not sending their offers? Um. So as I said, I wanted to, I pr- I wanted to prioritize also my academic. So I gave myself the four years that I had to fulfill, especially because um, um, I had a scholarship to maintain in Ateneo. And that's when, after my fourth year, after season 81, that's when um, Coach uh, JP and I talked about it. And then he told me that he's going to leave my last playing year um, for my decision to make if I wanted to stay or if I wanted to go. So originally, um, as I said in a different interview, that um, my focus is to stay in the Ateneo but at the same time if there were any opportunities I wouldn't close my doors to it I'd always be looking for an opportunity and I'd always be open for any opportunity and um, the timing was right with this opportunity with the ADP Um, it's not that that I didn't want to leave the men's football team in Ateneo it's just that I was looking for the right opportunity and there have been clubs before that that wanted um that wanted me to, to stop playing for the men's football team and continue to play um, and to start playing with the PFL, with this PFL team. But um, I didn't feel like it was the right move yet. I didn't feel um, it was stable enough, that the, the league was stable enough. And um, um, I found that this was just the, the best timing for me. So it wasn't that I wanted to win more. Of course, I wanted to win more. Um, who wouldn't want to win more? But it's not. It wasn't that. It wasn't either that um, that I wanted to continue um, studying. Uh, I do. I do want to finish my. Um, and that's still a priority. But my focus was really on just completing my um, pri- uh, my 
fulfilling my duties um, as a scholar, uh, at least scholar in Ateneo for my four years. And then, of course, um, being open to whatever. And that, this is what came, um, the ADT just came now. So that's why I chose to move now. Ayan. Now, uh, another question that we have here from Kenneth uh, Manlangit Madragon. Uh, very interesting. Uh, we know that uh, your father was um, a, a great basketball player. Uh, but bakit daw eh, hindi mo sinundan yung uh, yapak ni, ni daddy uh, in playing basketball? Actually, other than having a, a, um, a dad who's playing, who, who played basketball, you also played uh, or you were also um, in the athletics meet uh, in the UAP juniors, I think. Uh, you were on track and field yes. uh, discipline. Yes. Why uh, pursue uh, f- uh, football over those two sports? So, um, I began playing football when I was four years old. And um, I I jumped between playing basketball and playing football. Siyempre sa village namin before, uh, may mga ba- basketball leagues. Wala naman football league, uh, football tournaments sa mga villages. Yung sa amin, meron na basketball. So um, I'd play basketball and my dad would bring me to his clinic. Um, I just felt more of myself playing football. I felt like um, I found more interest in wanting to pursue football rather than basketball i i enjoyed it more i, I it's it's hard for me to say because i was four when i was making that decision and um i guess uh growing up it just it was me wanting to just make a name for myself i i, I wouldn't it's not that i don't want to but like um i wanted to um broaden the horizon of knowing who a gay also is rather than just basketball and um it was a it was it was um it's a nice and refreshing way to to think about um my decision to, to play football instead of basketball because um whenever i play football everybody's like it's about basketball and all that so this is me creating a new image for my last name instead of being just known for basketball Yun. Sana nasagot ni RV yung uh, tanong mo, Kenneth. Now, uh, another one from Roxanne Joy Prado. You are an inspiration to the youth, um, athlete or not. We are all aware that there are kids or adults who lack opportunities to show their skill in sports. What can you say to those people that have lesser or no opportunities to play in big leagues, uh, probably your age or higher, who still want to try and pursue their passion in sports? Uh, P.S. I love you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> So, um, when it comes to opportunities, you should, well, one thing we should all understand is that um, there are players who start very late and yet reach bigger, greater heights. So, um, uh, you can always find ways to improve yourself and improve your game. It doesn't even have to be being exposed to a lot of um, higher forms of um, competition. Um, what I've what I've what I've tried to experience uh, what I've tried to to understand was that um, like for example in this pandemic you can do something to 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 work on your game you can do something for you to be able to mentally prepare to physically prepare and to to prepare yourself in in the game by learning through watching videos and and tactically preparing yourself so um, it's hard to say when the opportunity comes but. As long as you're very, um, as long as you pursue what you want to do, especially when it comes to football, because there are not a lot of opportunities, especially when it comes to football, um, I think you should just find ways to grab whatever opportunity comes, even if it's the smallest thing. For example, um, there are a lot of, um, I, I, I'm, I live in a very humble village here in, in Santa Rosa, Laguna. And um, for example, I was friends with a Kagawad who, started a football club here and we train here in the park only we used to train here in the park and we were we were very young and we'd find local tournaments just around here um and we'd grab whoever kid wanted to play even if they didn't have football shoes even if they were playing in rubber shoes and we didn't even have jerseys that time ang jersey namin pag may blue kang shot ah pag may blue kang jersey yun na lang dalhin mo blue na lang tayo so it was something like that and um i have pictures i'll i'll, I'll show you guys next time but um, yeah, so it's just me and a bunch of people from this village and from villages beside us, and we just um, 
we just come together and, and go to the tournament together. We'd either have our barangay hall lend us the L300 or we do something. Uh, so uh, all I say is just grab every opportunity you get to, to, to learn. If, even if it's not um, football, because basketball is such a big sport, you can always learn footwork when it comes to, when it comes to basketball clinics. I've, I've watched my dad train a lot of um, students and um, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on footwork. So um, being able to cross train also, even if your priority is not in the same sport, if, if basketball is the only opportunity for you, you can always learn um, a lot from, from training basketball um, drills and then applying it in football. Separate bawal yung gamitin yung kamay, pero... <laughs> Yan, napagandang sagot. Now, before we head into other, um, you know, serious questions, uh, meron lang tanong sa atin, isa nating top fan na si Angelo Ariba. Ano raw rank mo sa ML? <laughs> Alam mo, hindi ako, nag- hindi ako naglalaro ng ML na mag-isa, tapos rank. Usually, n- naglalaro kami as, like, for example, yung men's football team, kami kami yung naglalaban, or um, when I play with friends, we play together, tapos puro classic lang. So, um, I forgot what my rank is. Para ang nasa legend, legendary or something like that. <laughs> lang. I don't, I don't really, I don't really play rank. <laughs> At least, uh, you know, um, ito yung isang way rin siguro for you to get together with your uh, Ateneo friends and teammates or former teammates. Yeah. So, uh, it's a great thing uh, hearing this. So, Angelo, ayan na. Uh, siguro, uh, sa legend, uh, legendary level pa lang si, si Harvey, baka makalaro mo siya sometime or uh, medyo malabo-labo since bihira nga raw siya mag-rank game. Um, we have... Uh, question here from uh, or going back to a uh, uh, more serious note coach Maor Rosen one of the um, uh, grassroots coaches here in the Philippines and who also coached uh, Kai FC before uh, he uh, gave us a comment that great potential talent uh, pertaining to you um, what do you demand uh, from a professional coach? Oh wow okay. um, <laughs> what do I demand from a professional coach? I think I think someone who would slap my face and say, "You're not good enough." Figuratively, yeah, not not physically slap my face, but figuratively slap my face and tell me that I'm not good enough. I'd like someone who would never sugarcoat things. I would I'd like someone who would tell me um, the problems that I have in the game and and who actually emphasizes and works on those problems. What I want from a coach is someone who can who can be very specific in a general way. So. Um, he can help the entire team, but at the same time, focus on what you yourself has, uh, what you yourself can work on. I, I, I'd like, I'd like a coach who can, who can, um, if even, even at the best times, like when you're winning games, he can always look at your mistakes and point out and work on that rather than be contented with um, whatever result happens or whatever score comes up. I mean, um, a coach who want, who keeps on wanting more, same as yeah, uh, Harvey, da? parang yan yung uh, I mean that's really a great mentality to have. Because you, um, for example, if if with with the Ascals uh, come this year, if we win the AFF Suzuki Cup, should we end in AFF Suzuki Cup? Of course not. We have no, a lot more. Okay. We have a lot more competitions to win or to participate in. So uh, th- that's really great to hear. Um, Siguro, I'll just read a couple more from our fans. Uh, ito, um, it's kind of pressing, but it's interesting at the same time. From uh, Sam Gamboa, what would you uh, radically change? in the football system in the Philippines from a fresher perspective of a younger generation? What would I radically change? Grabe no. Hinay-hinaya naman po natin yung mga tanong natin kay RB. Ako na rin yung nabibigla. But, I mean, it, it's a pressing question, uh, of course. But, yeah. it's something that, you know, um, someone or... or like us fans or even uh, uh, journalists would like to ask from from someone uh, na yun nga, from a younger generation. I I think I think the direction of the PFF. Um, I think the direction that they're going to is um, going towards is, isn't isn't um, that bad. I, I I have nothing against the PFF and I have nothing against the direction that they wanted to go to. Um, I feel like, in some ways, we are still progressing as a football country, and um, 
siguro just to think about something that rather than change but to improve upon is still the local league. Um, it's it's hard it's hard to establish a, a a local league when there are not much teams that are participating in. So if that's something that we can improve on, it doesn't have to change anything. They don't have to change anything. Maybe bawasan na yung entry fee. I don't know, but I don't know. But you know, maybe bawasan na yung entry fee para more teams can join. Because um, UFL had a lot of teams joining. I mean, there were there there are a lot of teams that were in the UFL, and I don't know how um, the PFF PFL can can emulate that. But um, that's something that can be approved. That that they can approve. Uh, they can improve upon um, the whole um, system of the league and having more participants join. Interesting. So I think it's it's really perfect that we heard that from you because uh, from a younger perspective, like I say, all of us here, all of us fans and uh, the likes, we're thinking that uh, we're, we're thinking the same that uh, in the UFL we had like ten or twelve teams, both in Division One and Division Two. And then uh, with the PFL, we started off. I think we had eight. Then we uh, we went down to six, and now uh, we're we're still at six. So um, uh, or seven, I think. So um, siguro yun nga, It's a great perspective coming from uh, someone uh, na papunta na rin dun sa sa path ng uh, professional football here in the Philippines. And and I hope that you know um, people are listening to us or uh, um, watching us. Um, y- you. Um, you kind of have a, another perspective here uh, from the likes of Harvey Gale. So, Siguro, um, I, I would just like to ask the, the gentlemen that we have here, David or Glenn, uh, do you have any other follow-up questions or anything else that you'd like to say about this young, chill dude that we have right now in our podcast? <laughs> um, yeah, it's more of like wanting to know his uh, reaction to this special historical game uh, against Malaysia mm, in the yes. uh, Sea Games. What was your like, uh, you know, one uh, zero? You guys like busted everything that you can. You gave it all, and parang hap, wala, parang masabog na ang lungs niyo at some point of during the game. But after the game, when you guys celebrated with both us, with us, like, how did it be like? You know, like, was the adrenaline still there? Like, tell me what were your first thoughts after the. Uh, the three whistles, the three final whistles. Yeah, it was it was inspiring, um, especially that we did it in our home crowd. Um, it was inspiring because um, we all gave everything. We all put in a hundred percent of ourselves just for um, the win. And um, actually, a few days. Oh no, not a few days. A few months back, in preparation, also um, we had a. Parang U23 trial team that went to uh, Malaysia also and competed there for AFC, I think, or AFF. And we went against Malaysia and we lost like 4-0, 5-0. And it felt really good that um, when, when it came to the SEA Games, when it came to the important match, when it came to um, playing at home, we were able to actually um, shut them up. We were able to actually win and to, to, to defeat them. And um, having the ultras there, iba talaga yung ultras. Pagdating dun, grabe nakaka-hype yung ultras. So, shout out to you guys. Um, but yeah, having the fans and having family there, um, especially uh, hours before the game, everybody was saying that it's been, um, I forgot how many years, but it's been a lo- really long time since we actually beat Malaysia. And in the SEA Games pa. So, um all in all, it felt like a victory. It, um, I, I, we all knew that it wasn't the end, but we, it felt like a victory already. It felt like we reached greater heights already. We, we felt accomplished with what we wanted to do, especially for that day and for that game. So um, that pushed us. That definitely pushed us, and it gave us a lot of hope because um, we came from a loss and a draw, and that gave us a lot of hope um, after winning, and that pushed us towards um, doing better. And doing our actually and to do outstanding against Timor Leste when, when we actually went against Timor Leste we, we um, even Kuya Shraki after the after the match he said he's never experienced beating any team by that much that by that big of a margin um, playing for the national team so it was it was great to feel and to hear that from Kuya Shraki and um, 
yeah, that 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 really pushed us and inspired us to do a lot more um, in on the field uh, in the next game. All right, grab yon, grab. That was by far the best day in, um, uh, siguro in uh, grassroots football for us, considering that it's. That was definitely it, a highlight of the game. That was the highlight of the Sea Games for us, actually, with with us beating um, uh, Malaysia since the last time that we won. It was 1991, so kind of like 28 years. Yeah. It was a very long time. And, uh, it's a long drought, yeah. Sobrang sayo nun. E- ikaw, Glenn, uh, do you have anything else uh, before uh, before we uh, end our podcast? Well, I, know I don't have any more questions, but I do want to... Uh... Hope, uh, wish for your success, of course. We look forward to your uh, future you, endeavors. You. Now, now that you're moving to your professional career, talagang we are really hoping that you're gonna excel, you're gonna do great, and I hope Thank that you, uh, you become the king in <laughs> PFL. <Yes. laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, one last thing, uh, Coach Alvin Ocampo uh, <laughs> uh, has put in a comment for you here. A talent like his comes once in a blue moon, hoping he will get the opportunity he deserves. Good luck, RV. Well, very well put, you, Coach. <laughs> very well put, Love Coach. You, um, any uh, any messages that you have, or any final messages that you have to your fans, your family and friends, and any everyone else watching our podcast for today? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for the opportunity to be here. Um I think it's great what you're doing. You're trying to spread the word of football, and, uh, and I appreciate everything that you're doing for um, for the world of football, especially in the Philippines. Um, uh, to my family and friends, thank you very much for your support. Um, I um, to the fans also. Um, I'd like to let you know that um, the college Harvey is a different Harvey, and I hope you enjoy seeing the new me when it comes to playing um, professionally. So. Um, I hope to see you all in the stands. I hope you continue supporting um, the PFL just as much as you support um, the UAAP, because um, it's a it's a it's an exciting it's an exciting year and exciting um, uh, football league that we're gonna have, especially with um, the new leadership, the new management, and the new sponsorship. Um, it's exciting to see. Um, I'm excited also, and I hope you just you, you you catch not only the the local tournament games but also. Um, the international games that are coming late um, this year. All right. Thank you so much, Harvey. Again, it's been a pleasure and it's an honor for us to have a uh, very young talent in you to uh, grace our uh, podcast uh, for today. And uh, we hope to uh, see you soon in the PFL and in uh, uh, more uh, international competition. Siguro, uh, one last thing for our fans. Isang mabilisa na lang. Shout out to everyone who, who's watching us. Uh, thank you to uh, to the sponsors that we do have. Um, Jersey Dior, uh, Kronos Athletics, uh, Red Rooster Sports PH. Uh, thank you so much. Just want to plug these two guys below me, uh, David and uh, Glenn. Starting off with Glenn, uh, follow his uh, Facebook page, The Six Yard Box uh, Burgers and Sports. Uh, maraming updates Jen, about football. With David, he has two shows, the What's Up Show and the What's Up Football Show by Johnny Pampa, wherein we talk football. Uh, we might talk about Formula One. We might talk live as well. And uh, we'll never know. We might have uh, something for you guys um, away from football. So, um, abang-abang lang tayo dyan. And again, thank you so much, Harvey. Uh, this has been the thank um, you, thank you. by far the uh, a, a very eye-opening um, uh, podcast episode that we do have. And again, <laughs> see you soon. Maraming maraming salamat to all of our viewers. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys on the pitch. Again, this is Tito J of Tito Mang Football Vlogger. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching, guys.